everybody. I'm Suki, the brown eyed stitcher. This is floss tube number 26. I had to go look it up because it's been like a month and a half since I filmed a legit floss tube video. Um, let's see here. Most of you probably know that the last six weeks have been well, five weeks, I don't know, however long it's been at this point, um, have been rough, gotten better. Um, most of you probably know this at this point, <laughs> but anyway, um, it's time. It's time for another video, legit floss tube video. So I've got several projects to cover things to talk about. My birthday is this week. Today is Monday, the 20th. Is it really the 20th? Yes, it is. Monday the 20th. Um, and my birthday is Friday the 24th and there's plans. Okay. Let's just get started. First, I'm going to show you Queen of the Night. This is by Josephine Wall, Chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is on 25 count, um, easy count. It is two threads, tent stitch. Looks like this. So I think last time I had shown it to you, I had finished this page, or I was close to being done. I've only put in 872 stitches since I last showed you. So some of it could have been over here and others of it would have been over here. As you can see by my hanging threads. So that's where it's at currently, 29.77% uh, finished. Next up, Mayari. Uh, Deity of the Moon, uh, Bella Filipina. She came out for, I think, 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. She is stitched on a 28 count opalescent Lugana in the colorway Cosmos by um, Be Stitch Me. And this is the bottom of her dress, and this is her halo. I was working up here in the halo. Um, this, so far, it, you see a blue in there. That is regular DMC, but the rest is chronic. Chronic. There's a lot of beads in here, so you see a lot of the empty spaces, but... This is, this is her hair. But that's what she looks like, top to bottom. That's how big she is. <gasps> um, I have no, like, stitch count or anything for her. She got worked on, that's all I know. Um, I think this next set are my whip go pieces. So my whip go, I've got every project that is on there, I have on there twice. So that's 12 projects on there twice to be 24 slots with number 13 slot as an, a free space. 
and um, I'm sorry. Focus, Suki. Um, the only goal I set was that I just had to work on it at all. So even if it was just like one stitch, it never is just one stitch. Um, Cause once I go through the effort of pulling it out and putting in a stitch, I might as well just finish that thread or like an hour or that evening or whatever. I don't know. Um, anyway, that's my whip go goal is simply to just like work on it at all. And if I do that, then I can call it good. Um, I do try to set like, I'd like to get this much done or this section or something like that, but I don't stress about it if I don't hit that because that's kind of like the stretch goal. So I'm pretty certain this was in January. Pavon for these times, it's a long dog sampler piece. I'm stitching it on a 36 count that I hand dyed myself. This thread is from Silks For You. Um, PR150, which is a variegated, like, gray color. Um, I did restart this in October, and I'm loving it so much more right now. Uh, the color really, really pops on this um, darker purple. So this, I put in 704 stitches, and it's at 4.7% complete. And this is what I had wanted to get done, was this first section. And I did that. My second January whip go piece was Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. This is the version with both cross stitch and specialty stitches. Um, so every other band, it starts with cross stitch and then specialty stitch, cross stitch, specialty stitch. If you don't, if you like the pattern but you don't like the specialty stitches, there are, is, there is a cross stitch only version available. Um, story time, y'all. Because I had such a breakdown with this piece. If you were there, you know. Um, so this is on a 32 count Belfast linen. Let me show it to you first. It's on black. I've got this much done, okay? So I thought in January it'd be cool if I could finish both the colors in this butterfly band. As you can see, I did the first color and then I started the second color. Um, this is where I had my breakdown, okay? I finished this color and went on to start this one and had this. <sighs> I was very, very raw at the time. And like barely holding on to my emotions. Okay, wasn't even holding on to my emotions. And like I warned everyone who was on that live stream that if like something else went wrong, I was going to completely lose it. And I did, and then they watched me cry for like 15 minutes. Anyway, so <clears throat> here's the thing. The first thing that happened, the first thing that happened was that this is stitched one with DMC, one strand over two squares. And then I did this, and this these specialty stitches, they're stitched in a Veriswall, one strand. 
And then I started over here, and there was quite a break between ending this and starting this, I think. Um, several months. Yeah, several months. When I started this, I went up, I picked up the DMC, and I stitched it with two strands instead of the one strand that I did there. And so when I picked this up again for Whipgo, I was like down here, and that's where I realized that I had done this in two strands instead of one strand. And so I was already upset with that. And that's when I had said, if anything else goes wrong tonight, like, I'm going to lose it. So I get to the end of this, and then I'm picking out the next color, and I realize that I have all the Avera Swap. Why was I stitching any of it in DMC? I don't know. I legitimately have no idea, except in my brain, I thought that the cross stitch was in DMC and the specialty stitches was in Avera Swap, and that is false. Y'all, <laughs> either stitch it in the DMC or stitch it in the Avera Swap, but you don't have to swap between the two. Like this color right here should be this color right here. That's the only time this color is used. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so um, y'all helped me work through my issue. Uh, and I started with, I picked it back up with the Avera Swall color. I think it's this one. It doesn't really matter. Um, and now I'm going to stitch the rest of it in... Did I do this with one strand like I should have? Yes, I did. So then I went back to a Vera Swall one strand here. And I'm probably just going to leave all of this as is. Probably. Um, by the time I get to the end of it, It'll, just, it'll, it'll be a memory. Um, hopefully not a negative memory, but like I pushed through and I stitched here. I did it with tears streaming down my face. Um, but there was just something in me that said like I had to keep going. I couldn't, I couldn't stop there. Um, I had to keep going. So I did, but it meant after that night, I set it aside and I never went back to it, and I'm okay with that. Um, I will sometime come back to this piece when it's called for whip go again, and hopefully be more emotionally ready to work on it again. <laughs> hopefully I'll have some distance from that raw space that I was in the moment when I was working on it before. I'm very dehydrated, so <clears throat> I don't normally drink during my videos, but I'm going to have to, at least sometimes. Okay, um, February Whip Go Cirque de Caro by Ink Circles. I worked on this for, during 24 hours of cross stitch, I put in uh, 354 stitches. This is on a 32 count. Um, Belfast linen. The color is Stormy Night. And the thread is a beautiful variegated Silks for You PR0090. It stitches up beautifully. I... What did I put in? I put in, I think, these three, and then this line, and then I came over here, and I think I did this one, and then I did this little row of singlets right there. Something like that. I think that's what I did. I didn't... This one I hadn't decided on any particular, like goal or anything. I just stitched a bit on it. And I'm happy it's at 8.6% now. I 
I really do enjoy working on that one. It's very pretty. The next whip go for February is this Janlin kit Victorian Christmas bell pole. I'm up here near the top. This is a shiny glossy paper so it's very hard not to get the ring light glare on it. Ta -da! Anyway, I This is what I did. I had started these all uh, the leaves on both sides, um, but this time I finished it up, including the back stitch. This set of leaves, y'all, so there's three seams, and each seam in the corner has these leaves. So I have five more sets of these leaves to stitch overall. But the next time I work on it, I will probably start the, the little seam the, they're ice skating, the boy and the girl, here, I will probably start right up there next time this comes out, um, I'll probably also bring some of the border down, something like that. I do love this font. It was, I loved stitching that one. That was last time. I didn't do that this time, but I did very much enjoy it. Uh, yeah, okay. So that was Withgo for January and February. Uh, this next piece. These next two pieces I call fostered pieces. Um, other people own them, but I'm stitching on them, so they don't count towards my overall whip count. That's how that works. This one is No Smoking by Randall Spangler, artwork by Heaven and Earth Designs. If you've been here or have watched the my early, early videos, like the first four videos somewhere in there. You'll know that this piece is my daughter's piece. Um, and, and I'm stitching on it now. I'm fostering it from my daughter. If this is on 25 count, it is two stranded tent stitch. And it looks like this now. I. I didn't work on it tons. Um, it's at 5.05% now, but I know I, I worked on here and in here, and there's like this white that is coming up, if you can see that. Um, that's mostly what I did. Some fill-ins in here. All the rest of this up here is uh, Kaylin's work. She knows that... Uh, this is fully done with her permission, by the way. I didn't just take it from her. Um, I have her full permission to be stitching on it, and she knows that if at any point she wants me to stop or she wants to stitch on it for a little bit, that she can. She, she's like, you don't have to say it's my project. I'm like, oh yes, I do. Because when it's done, it's going to you. Like, it's your project. It's just, I'm just going to stitch on it. That's all. It is a little piece. It's like 89,000 stitches or something like that. Um, 85, 86, 86,000. It's just a little one. All right, this one is a stamped kit that is fostered. It belongs to Alara, and she started it, and now, let's see, she had like the first 10 rows and like second, half of the second one done. I'm now on the fourth row? Yeah, the fourth set of rows. 
So all of up here, up to here is done. And now you can see over here is also all done. It actually looks like stamped kits are crazy. You can't always tell where things are stitched, but I feel like you can really see what's going on over here. And you can see where I've stitched. There are a few other random spots where I finished out like a thread that was on my needle. So there's, there's some random spots down here, but you can't really here, here, but they don't really make up anything yet, so it, it doesn't do me any good to show you. This one, I grab when I don't want to, when I need something easy, something to do with my hands, but I don't want to deal with like the addition of a pattern, so I, I just grab this one in those moments. This piece is, let me take this out of the plastic. It's by Cottage Garden Samplings, a Year in the Woods series. This is number 12, The Reindeer. Um, I started with this one because I'm stitching them all by season. And I wanted to start with the far left um, pattern in winter. And here's where I'm at. This is 32 Count Lugana Gray Magic by Bestitch Me. I got the Bestitch Me Woodland Bundle for all the patterns. Um, let's see. This is, this snowflake is in the top right corner. So the entire top 10 rows are finished. Um, the antlers are close. We've got to finish this swoop and then there's another tiny swoop out here. We have a tree. We've got some bits of legs. Uh, this is what the fabric looks like opened up. This is this is like halfway right here so it's not going to go all the way down here it'll go like to here or something like that um and then the fox will be in the middle and the swans over on the right side well yes i was like wait this is my left side but if i'm looking at it it's the right side This is my travel piece, so it pretty much lives in my purse. Uh, unless I swap it out for the stamped kit. And it just goes with me. And I pull it out if I'm waiting for an appointment or listening to something or... I don't know. Whenever. Okay, this is called Snowshoe Hair by, um, the art is Miriam Russo. It's chartered by the sewing shop dot CA. That's, um, Kaylee Tent Stitch. Super cute, but it's hard to see on white paper. Um... But the fabric is not white. It's amazing. It's this opalescent. It's a 28 count opalescent. It's hand dyed by Kaylee herself. And look at that cute face. You can see a little bit of white out here. That's its ear. Okay, so story with this is I started in the middle. I worked my way up here. And then I started filling in and working my way down when I realized that somewhere in my counting between here and here, I um, was off by like two full stitches. So because I had so many stitches up here, I went ahead and frogged all of this with what's, 
which was something like 500 stitches. About 540 stitches down here. Um, but it was all one color and it was less than what I had stitched up here <laughs> by the time I figured that out. So I stitched or frogged all of that and then re-stitched another 500 and anyway. Um, oh, I just smacked my eyeball. I do not have a card made for this, which means I did not look at where I was. Um, 10%. This is 10%. 3,108 stitches, and it's 10% exactly. Um, and that took me about six days. And, and I think that's counting the fact that I had to frog. Yeah. I'm pretty certain that's the case. It's very cute. Um, yes. The next project to show you is a new purchase and a new start. This one... was just at the time what it was just very needed it was just needed it still is um but it was a good decision for me to start this that's what I'm saying um it's a Riolis kit my first Riolis it's called Green Hills but I refer to it as the Shire uh, so, Riolis kits, if you have never worked with them before, they have um, wool acrylic threads, and they come on cards like these. They're clearly numbered. This is 310, by the way. It's such, it's like the smallest amount of color in this entire thing. Um, and then if you have multiples, they're both clearly labeled, two and two. They have this notch thing. It's just, I love it. Um, and it's been really enjoyable to stitch with. Uh, so this is colors one through five. Here is six through 11. There's more 11 on the next one. So you can see these, there's four of those. This is 11 through 13. Obviously, lots of green and 14 through 18 on here. Okay, um, the kit or the. Okay, I want to show you this because. Because I just like it so much, but I don't want to do it having. Sh okay, I'll do it this way. So at the top of the pattern, they have this, and this is only half of it, the other half is over here, okay? They have your symbol, and then this tells you uh, if you're doing a full cross, this says backstitch. All of these are full crosses except for the backstitch. Um, over here. You'll see that's a tent stitch. These are tent stitches or half cross. Um, okay. This one tells you the color number on the cards. I've got stuff going everywhere. So on those cards I showed you, this is number one, the 310. And this bottom number tells you how many strands you use which also you can see in this picture up here, like there's two threads here versus this one, which only has one, but it's just telling you for sure it's here. This means it's a blend. It's color four and five, and you use one strand of each. 
for that full cross. So that's how they do their like legend. And then their pattern, it's just big. I'm, it's colorful, it's big, and you, I'm just marking it off. But um, the pattern is bigger than the stitching itself. It's very easy to read. Um, it's, it's just very, very clear, and I really, really enjoy it a lot. Um, I haven't even shown you the project yet. Ta-da! Look at those colors. The sky, like this is one color, but it's the difference between a full cross and a half cross. That's all that the difference is. And then the greens down here, these are blended colors. This purple is also a blend. You can kind of see it the blending. But that's how far I've gotten. This is just, I think, two days worth of stitching. Um, and here it is as a whole. Uh, this is my second Lord of the Rings wall started piece. Shire. I love it. This next piece, this is Dimensions Gold Collection, Woodland Enchantress. Um, yes. This piece I've been using as my daily 30 piece which is just stitching on a project for 30 minutes every day. Um, there are a couple days I have not stitched on it, but those times are always made up regularly. I'm regularly working on this for long, longer than 30 minutes in a day. So the time is all still there, even if I technically didn't stitch on every single day. There's really only been like maybe three or four that I haven't done. But here's the whole thing. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. So when I started this year out, I was like over here and had like a diagonal and I had all of these parked threads. Like literally it was like this. Like that's what I had done. I worked in all those parked threads and then my cue snap was here. So I filled in everything over here. Look at this, like it glows. I mean, it doesn't actually, there's nothing in here that glows, but the way that they use their color, it, it just, bing! Anyway, so I finished there, and then I moved over here, and I just worked on the background, and I'm at the right corner, and now I'm working my way down. My plan is to just continue to work all the way around, only doing background, and when I get over here, then I'm going to start on her the skirt, and I'm going to work my way this way. I mostly decided that I was doing it that way because by the time I finish working over here, my cue snap will be here, and so it will be easy to start in on her skirt and go this way. But I love seeing, like, you can see her outline, like her hair, where it's going to be, and even down here is more hair, and her hand, her other hand is over here. This is a staff. You can see the outline of that. It's so, so fun. So just in less than two months, I've gone from something like this to all of this. Yeah. I'm really enjoying that. I don't know how long... This will remain as my daily 30 until it is finished. At the beginning of the year, I was thinking it would take me all year long. And it still might. I still have, like, no idea. But I'm really enjoying um, working on this. I think when this piece in particular, for some reason, whenever I go long periods without stitching on it, like, getting back into it takes me a while. 
and then I enjoy it. Uh, and so having this as something that I'm just regularly doing, there's a no long break without it. And that uh, has really helped, I don't know, I just have continued to really, really enjoy it. Maybe it's just that I know I'm only working on it for 30 minutes and then I'm done and I'm moving on. Um, it doesn't bother me that I'm just working on blues for days and days and days. Um, but again, that could be because it's not um, like it's just at 30 minutes I could stop or I could just keep going if I wanted to. Okay, one more project, a, a whip, and you know what that is. Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, super size, max color, artwork by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I am in this third shelf now. And I have put in, oh, this is on 28 count, um, easy count fabric, two stranded tent stitches. Um, I've put in 27,933 stitches. We're at 60.84% now. Like less than 40% to go. Crazy. Like, crazy. I'm still very much on track with this piece. Um, I have zero worries, really, about finishing it when I want to be done. Here we are. Um, I have no idea where we were last video, so enjoy. Um, let's see. So we've got these suitcases. We've got the pagoda. Um, the teacups, the bubbles came from here. Look at that, the bubbles. We've got this kitty cat reaching out for a bubble. We've got more bubbles. Um, this right here is another cat. It's like the front face of a cat laying down. Um, I think these are like pottery or vases or something. Um, the bottom, the girl now is completely done, and there's something very, very bittersweet about that for me. Um, the book says Snow White, and now I am working on this, and it is a massive tree. The top goes all the way over here, um, but I think it comes in like this, and then down, and... There's a lot of black in this section. All of this is pretty much black, and there's a lot more in this whole section. But that's where we're at on Treasure Home Bookshelf. It looks so good. Um, so one of the things that happened in January uh, mm. was that... Uh, I don't know that I should say I lost a stitchy book. I still stitched. I stitched every single day. Um, but there were days when I didn't want to. Especially, I went on a medication that uh, caused depression. So I quickly was off that medication. But while that medication was in my body, I was dealing with this depression. And that was probably the hardest time. Like, I did not want to stitch at all. Um, but my very best stitchy friend, Alara, she told me, stitch anyway. Like, if you don't have an, a legitimate reason other than depression, which she wasn't saying that's not a legitimate reason. That's Anyway, she's like, if it's just because of depression... Stitch anyway. Routine is important even when you're depressed. And um, and also, like, I was feeling so empty and lost. Um, 
if I didn't keep stitching, I would have felt like I lost like the rest of me. So anyway, um, I kept on stitching on this. Um, there were days when it was hard. They were hitting certain milestones. All the milestones, honestly, have been hard. Um, like good, but also hard. Just because of what's going on. And, um, but I'm, I'm very happy with this. It's not like I don't love this piece. I do. I completely love this piece. And I think that's what makes certain things hard right now. Anyway, um, but I'm working on this tree. Um, halfway is here-ish. Wait, 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 wait. The horse is up here. I think this is halfway. Does that look like halfway? <laughs> I don't know. Um, the goal is to be done with this shelf October 31st of this year. And then I will go down to the fourth shelf and be done October 31st, 2024. Um, currently, I need to stitch about 570 stitches a day. And I've allowed for 60 non-stitchy days within the year. And so far, I've only used four of those. So I still have 56 days where I could not stitch on this piece. Um, without hurting that daily stitch count of 570. Actually, technically, last time I calculated it was 568, but whatever. <laughs> That's where we are. It looks so good. It really does. I am quite happy with this. Okay. Um... I started diamond painting. I'm gonna show you that, and then I'm gonna show you, we're, we're not done talking cross-stitching. I'm just gonna show you my diamond painting. Um, it is over halfway done. This is from Diamond Art Club. It's called Black and White um, by Deborah Lewis is the designer. Look at that horse. So good. So you can see I only have from here down like that quadrant to do. I, I am missing some colors. I ran out of a color, y'all. Um, that is up here. But... Those drills are on their way to me, so we'll be good. There is like a sparkly, it's not going to show up on here, but in the white, there's like one of those Aurora Borealis colors um, in here. You just, it never, cameras and videos just don't capture the sparkle. Uh, so this is my first ever diamond painting. And I was pretty certain I was going to like it because um, I really enjoy the sparkle effect of Krennic and um, other metallics and beading. I just really like that. So I was pretty certain I would enjoy diamond painting. And I was totally right. I have completely loved this. And I've got two more on their way to me. Um... Y'all might think I'm insane when it comes, but, you know, I'll show you when it gets here. <laughs> but, um, I want this one finished before my next ones come because I want it. One of the ones that is coming is the one I want to start next. And it's the one you guys are, I don't know. Maybe it'll just make sense since I have a super size max color. Um, but yeah. Maybe that gives you a hint as to why it would be insane. Okay. My birthday is on Friday. I'm going to be 36 years old. Um, and 
I don't even know how many of us are starting this chart. Um, like easily 20 people at a minimum. Like I feel like it's way more than that, but I have, I have zero idea. <laughs> okay, so on Friday or thereabouts, some people have already started, some people are starting um, this week, but we're starting this golden kite chart called Home in the Mountains. It is a picture of Rivendell. And the fellowship is right here on the bridge. I am stitching the standard size blended color version, uh, which is a 700 by 495, total stitch count of 346,500 stitches. Uh, if you have are, are looking into getting this chart and want to know how you can get it cheaper, go ahead and message me or leave a comment or something. I've talked about it um, many times, but uh, I know that we don't all catch all the things. Um, so just let me know if you're interested in the information. Um, several people are stitching like the medium size or the non-blended version. So it's going to be fun uh, to see all the different varieties um, popping up. We have a hashtag, okay? We're gonna pop it up here on the screen. It's hashtag Suki made me L O T R, okay? <laughs> Can't believe I'm making this the hashtag. Why did Kaylin talk me into this? Um, that's gonna be our hashtag, and that way we can use it for not just Rivendell but like any Lord of the Rings pattern, um, because Rivendell or Lord of the Rings might not be your thing, um, but like uh, I was talking with Alara and she's like, well, like I want to join in somehow and she loves stitching dragons. So I said, maybe you can find a smug. And so now she's on the hunt for one that she likes. Um, <laughs> So if you want to join in on any Lord of the Rings pattern, uh, it doesn't just have to be Rivendell, and it, and it can be at any point in time. You can use that hashtag, Suki made me L-O-T-R, um, and then I can follow along in all your progress, and we can love on the Lord of the Rings projects that are out there. So Rivendell is going to be my third piece started for my Lord of the Rings wall. Um, I've got Frodo and Galadriel, I've got the Shire, and now it'll be this Home in the Mountains. What's interesting is that's all from three different companies, um, Heaven and Earth Designs, Riolis, and Golden Kite. The fourth one that I'm pretty certain I'm going to start at some, well, I'm not sure exactly when, um, I don't have the fabric yet, but I did order it, is... The Lord of the Rings map, and that's from a different company, Tilton Crafts. And so it's kind of funny to me that the, they're all different companies. Um, I have uh, some others from Heaven and Earth Designs that I'm going to do, but um, like my wall will be very like different designers, and I love it. I love it. So, I am stitching Rivendell on 28 count. What's weird is that this 28 count came with, like, this wide thing. Like, I've never had one that's done that. But, like, this one has them all over the place. It doesn't bother me, and it, it's, like, not a problem whatsoever. But it's throughout the entire piece. Anyway, this is 28 count... I will be stitching it two-stranded 10 stitch. That's not a surprise whatsoever, I'm sure. Um, I have not cut down this fabric yet. It is a full yard of 28 count. Um, but I haven't I haven't cut it down yet. Prep work for this pattern? What's that? Um, I have a couple more days before I need to do that. <laughs> but that's what I'm stitching it on is um, 28 count, two strands, 
tenth stitch. I still haven't decided if I'm starting on the left side or the right side, upper corners. Like, I mean, I'm either going to start over here and, and work my way like this way, or I'm going to start over here and work my way this way. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet. I usually start in the upper left. But I kind of want to start over here instead. I don't know yet. I um, obviously have a couple days to figure this out. Uh, when I bought that fabric, I bought the Shire at the same time by Riolis. Um, and I also bought this pattern. It's called um, Prayer of St. Francis. It's by My Big Toe Design. Um, I'm not a fan of the colorway at all, really. Um, I want more of an emphasis on the words than there, than there are. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but, um, it's, it's not on my radar right now, but now I have the pattern. So there's that. I feel like I have a lot of things coming to me right now, but. I don't actually think I have that. Oh no. I have a pattern. I've got fabric. And I've got two diamond paintings coming to me. And thread drops for blends. I kind of spent a lot in like a two day time period. Time period. Because I also, I'm going to Stitch West in October, y'all. Um, so if you're going, let me know. Uh, but I paid that invoice, like, right in the same time. And I told, I told Kaylin, I'm like, I've spent a lot of money the last couple of days. And she's like, eh, you do that. And I was like, I don't spend a lot of money. And she's like, no, like, you do it in, in chunks. Like, you'll go long periods of time without really spending anything outside of, like, the necessary things and then and then you'll have a time period where you're like spend money and then you go long periods I'm like oh okay yes I do do that so <laughs> there's that okay so my plans now this is oh wait hold on before I get to plans okay I had to go collect these things um I have been the recipient of so much love and support from all of you over the last six weeks. Um, it has been absolutely incredible. I don't even know the amount of messages that I have received, um, the, the number of people who have kept me company on all those live streams, the um, like the sheer amounts of time you guys have spent with me, um, helping me through those weeks where I wasn't eating, um, or sleeping very well, the encouragement, the ideas, the, the, the support, like the, the tears, like it's been incredible. And for you guys to also send me gifts, um, it's just so sweet. So I got a card from Dawn. It says, this isn't really a card. It's a Valentine hug in an envelope. Um, and she wrote a little note inside, but there's, it's so cute. Um, and then uh, Rachel sent me, she sent me needles, which is needed. Um, and she also sent me this needle minder. Okay, my fingernails, y'all, they've got purple underneath them because I just got my hair dyed a couple days ago. Uh, anyway. This is going on Rivendell. She got it from Mad for Minders. Mad for Minders. Um. There. Anyway. This 
Isn't that so cute? It's going to be perfect for Rivendell. Okay, and then uh, from Jess, Stitches of Sass, <sighs> she sent me a lot of needle minders with these like super cute notes, okay? So this says, I don't care, and this says unsolicited opinions from random people, and it's a trash can. And she says, because, hashtag, if you know, you know, and moms. <laughs> um, this one says, one, mental breakdown later. And this one says, mental health matters, because they're both acceptable. Uh... <laughs> This is a YouTube and this is a clock. It says, because you're the hashtag 24 hours of cross stitch YouTube MVP. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oops. This says, be happy. And this is uh, Starbucks, a pink version, which uh, Kaylin really likes. Uh, because happy. I'm pretty certain if Kaylin stitched, she would try to steal that one. So it's a good thing that I have her foster project right now. And then this, look how huge this is. <laughs> it's so big. I love it. Happy birthday. So, um, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. leave these right there because I need the space okay I th I think that's everything I was kind of looking around seeing if I missed something I tried to keep everything in one spot but I don't always succeed at that especially when it's been almost two months since I filmed last so Anyway, um, oh, plans. That's where we're at now. So, yesterday, no, two days ago now, um, this idea was totally fleshed out with several of you on um, that day's live stream. I hope I remember to mention Discord after my plans. Okay. And hopefully saying that will trigger it in my brain to mention it. My plans. Okay. So this started out with like um, kind of like a, a ladder idea. That's what it got dubbed was a ladder rotation. Um, I think I'm going to tweak it a little bit from the my original idea. But my original idea... I'm not sure why I'm going to explain the original idea, and except maybe it'll spark some idea with you. Because I asked what, how people were, like, do you just stitch according to your mood? Do you stitch according to a rotation? Like, I was looking for ideas, and it, we had a great conversation about how people um, chose what to work on uh, and things like that. So it was great. It, it could give me some ideas, and... So maybe this over explanation, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it will give you some ideas if you like. So I was thinking I would, I could, um, obviously bookshelf is a daily project and Woodland Enchantress is also a daily project. So those are just like set and, oh, and my travel stitching, a year in the woods and the stamped kit, right? But then I was, for a while, I was just kind of stitching sweeby, right? Stitch what you want when you want. Um, or according to other people's votes for me and suggestions, that was very helpful. Um, but I was starting to feel like, okay, I can move forward a little bit again. Um, like... I was starting to find my feet again. I am still. 
um, and kind of ready to think about the future with less pain than I had been. So my idea originally was like this ladder and each time I reached the end of this ladder rotation, I would add on another piece until I hit six projects. And then I would just rotate through all of those six. So for example, I would do project one for a week and then I would do project two for a week. And then I would go back to one and then two and then add on number three. And then I'd start back at one, two, three, and then add four. The problem with this is that I realized that I wouldn't even touch piece, piece number six for five months, like week 20. I'm like, is there even a point in having six pieces if I'm not even gonna touch that one for 20 weeks? So, what I think I'm going to do instead is do project one, project two, project one, project three, one, four, one, five, one, six. And then I'm touching project six in 10 weeks instead of 20 weeks. It's like two and a half months versus five months. Like that feels better to me. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then people helped flesh this out. So these are ideas from so many different people that just came together. Okay. So each week at the beginning of the week, which starts on Monday, so I'm starting today, um, I will set a goal, a weekly goal for that project. Um, and I will work on that piece until I meet the weekly goal or until the week is over, end of day Sunday. Um, if I meet that weekly goal early, then I'll know that I need to choose a more aggressive goal in the future. But it also means that then I can stitch on anything else. Um, I don't have to keep going on that piece unless I want to. I can pull out anything I want. So it, it still gives me some flexibility there. Um, if I don't meet my weekly goal, <laughs> there were two ideas here. Uh, somebody suggested something like snakes and ladders or shoots and ladders, whichever version you know the game by. Um, and if I don't meet my weekly goal, I, I basically slide back to the beginning and have to start my rotation all over again. Um, that was hilarious. Um, but the one I'm going to go with is Monopoly, where if I don't meet my weekly goal, then I go to jail um, and I have to stitch 200 stitches on um, a project. I'm not actually sure which project I'm going to pick. I will either pick project number six because I don't know why, I just might. Um, or what I'll do is I'll roll a dice and pick from there um, or whichever project it rolls, whatever number it rolls that project, I will stitch it on. Or third option is that I just let Kaylin pick. Or maybe I should do it on my foster project for Kaylin. See, that's a fourth idea. So I have a lot of ideas. I'm not sure which one I'll go with yet, but um, maybe, maybe Kaylin will have an opinion. You know she has opinions, y'all. Um... Another idea is that like once a quarter, every, every quarter I could switch out what pieces I was working on. Um, I'm going to wait and decide on that later because what I'm kind of hoping is that the way that I have my pieces the chosen, uh, two of them at least will basically be working on that finish. Um, and then though they would get replaced by other pieces. So we'll see. And if it's going to take me 10 weeks before I even hit project number six, um, like, am I really going to want to swap them out 
two weeks later, you know? So, but that was, a, that's another good idea. If I were just picking like four projects and rotating through four projects, then switching out every quarter would make a lot of sense. Um, anyway, but I'm just giving you all these different ideas because maybe you're looking for something or an idea sparks from that that you might want to try yourself. Uh, so my six projects are chosen by categories. Again, this was somebody else's idea that I that I took. Um, I chose my categories to be a priority project, a Lord of the Rings project, a full coverage, a non-full coverage, a uh, close to a finish, and uh, specialty stitches. So my six projects, I don't quite know the order of this yet. I know some of it, actually. Uh, my priority piece is the rabbit. And I already know that my weekly goal on this is going to be 10%. Uh, so nine weeks of working on this theoretically is going to see it to a finish. That would be cool. That That's like six months from now, but um, anyway, there's that. That's going to be project number one. Project number two is going to be my uh, full coverage. Where did it go? Here it is. Rivendell. Um, project three um, I think it's going to be well I know I'm I know this is going to be the project I'm just pretty certain that I'll put it in the number three spot. It's going to be the Summer Garden by the Drawn Thread. What I'm doing when I'm deciding the order is that I don't want... I just want to kind of spread out like this is a smaller project and I don't want the small projects to be next to each other even if um, the rabbit is going to go in between each of those pieces. That's all I'm looking for. Um, this piece, I'll show you where it's at. It's right here. The house is done and I was working on that tree over here. Um, project four will be Sabrina. This is my Mirabilia. Um, I'm stitching this in collaboration with Catherine, Needleberry Stitcher. We're doing a comparison. Um, so that's where she's at. Oh, she looks so good. Okay, so that's project, where am I at? Four, project four. Project five is somewhere over here. Here we are. The Shire piece. This is my Lord of the Rings piece, even though I have Rivendell. Technically, between Rivendell and the Shire, both are full coverage and both are Lord of the Rings, so they're interchangeable in their category. But I'm using Rivendell as the full coverage piece and this one as the Lord of the Rings piece. It doesn't matter. And the one that's closest to a finish is... 
God Rest You Merry Gentlemen by Lindy Stitches. Um, oops. Tossing the thread all over. Uh, so this is like the bottom border. So it really is like the closest to a finish. It's probably my smallest piece right now. Uh, yeah, my smallest piece. So it's easy for that to be closest to a finish. And that's going to be project number six. Um, and so if I do my like jail stitches on project six, it would be that project. If I did roll the dice, it would, could be any of those projects. If Kaylin picked, it could be legit any project. Um, or it could be like my fostered no smoking project. So I currently have 25 whips. Um, I will have six, seven, eight, nine, ten um active projects to um have a way to work through them right now uh, but i also am giving myself the permission to like if there's a day when i'm like i just can't do this i want to stitch on this other project completely i'm going to do that um because I think it's very, very important for me to, to give myself that flexibility within my structure. Um, what else are relating to this? Oh, I was saying I have 25 projects. Once I start Rivendell, that will be 26. Plus I have two fostered projects. Uh, so... Those don't count in my whip count. Okay, Discord. If you are unfamiliar with Discord, it is a platform. Um, you can think of it kind of like a Facebook group, but not connected to Facebook and way better in my opinion. Uh, over 50 of you have joined at this point, and it's been a beautiful community. I will put a link to Discord in the description box. However, I do know that those links only last like a week. So if you click on it and it's expired, an ex expired invitation, please reach out to me um, so that I can get you the link. Uh, you do not have to join at all. This, it's, the name of the, the group, it's called the Suki Village, um, and it's kind of this double meaning. One, it's, um, a gathering of people, uh, like, a gathering of my people, I guess, <laughs> but it's also, Suki in Japanese means love, and so it's, a love village. It's a place where we can um, talk about, we can talk about our stitching. Um, it's a really good place for people who have secret projects um, to be able to share their secret projects without like their partner or children like coming across it in other social media avenues. Uh, we have a place for when people are struggling with sleeping at night, they can reach out. Um, we have one called it's Take, It Takes a Village. And this is a place where um, when somebody is struggling and needs support from others, whether it's just like acknowledgement or... If it's a distraction or whatever, we are able to post in that area and 
um, and, and allow the village to gather around and, and support them in their need. Um, that is honestly the biggest reason for why I am uh, with this why this discord server exists uh, is for that purpose. Um, but we have lots of other things that we talk about too and it's great. I love it so much. Another benefit of here is that there are like voice slash video channels um, where people can hop on and you can talk using your voice. You can turn your camera on if you want the video component. Um, and if you're in a location where you can or you are just uncomfortable with either showing your face or your like speaking, maybe you have a lot of background noise or something, there's a chat feature in that channel as well. So it's kind of like a live stream at that point where you type your responses, but you can still be involved in the conversation. That has been great um, addition. And I love, I love seeing it in use when people um, need it. There's been times when people have gone in there during the night because, um, because of struggles that somebody was having and they needed that company and that distraction um, and just that support and love from other people. It's, it's just, it's wonderful. So I am um, putting this out there to all of you. If you are interested in joining that community, um, even if you don't know what Discord is, there's been so many people who are figuring out Discord for the very first time. It's it's not a it's not very difficult, but I understand that it's new for a lot of people. Um, but if you're interested, the description or the invitation link will be in the description box. But if that link does not work, please reach out to me. So um, it could just be that that link expired or something and I will make sure to get you that link. Um, it really is a great place, uh, and if that sounds interesting to you at all, then come join us and see what it's like. You, can, you may always find it's not for you when you decide to leave. That's totally fine. I'm fine with that. Whatever. We're good. Um, I, think, I think that's all. Uh, is this all? Think it's all um i am super behind on watching floss tooth videos uh there was a good solid month where i just couldn't um so if you haven't seen me around your videos when i normally am that's why uh but anyway as i always say you can reach out to me at any point. Um, my Instagram messages are always open. Um, you can contact me through Discord. If you're there, you can send me a direct message on Discord. Um, you can leave comments here if you don't mind the a public nature of it. I don't know. Um, if you have a way to contact me, contact me if ever you need it. If you need somebody to just spend time with you, um, just one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's a uh, just a video call because you need company or you just need to acknowledge something hard in your life, or even if it's not anything hard and you have something to celebrate, My messages are open for that too. So um, the biggest thing that I can say about the last um, five to six weeks is that um, reach out. It can be hard to reach out and say, I'm in this vulnerable place right now and, and I need help to get through it. That can be hard. Um, but saying that allows 
it creates an invitation for other people who um, already love you and already care about you and and it allows them to be there for you in a in a very specific way um, and and they want to okay I truly I wish I had a list of every unique individual who has ever been on a live with me over the last six weeks, of every person who has sent me a message. Um, like, this list would be long. And, like, just the idea of it is making me cry. So seeing it would be overwhelming in a good way. Um, it's hard to believe that there's so many people who who care about me enough to have spent all of this time with me and supporting me. Um, but you have. You have, and you continue to do so. And if you find yourself in a position where others can support you in that way, Please reach out, please, just even if it's one individual and not a thousand people, like that's okay. But reach out um, to somebody and allow them to, to care and support you during your time of need, okay? Much love to all of you. Um, many, many times over. Okay. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.